I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you are listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Brought to you by Open Studio. And today we are fielding a question from an email that we got. You can go and send Open Studio an email, especially if you're an Open Studio member. I like it. Old school. Old school. Did email. I ever tell about my friend who uh, a few years ago uh, stopped me if I've said the story? Or we could just edit it out if I've already said it. <laughs> I had a good friend who just a few years ago said, uh, was still holding out on not getting an email address because he thought it was just a fad. And he's like, finally, he's like, I'm going to get an email because it seems like it's here to stay. He thought it was like another... <laughs> what? Like like MySpace or something. <laughs> I'm not getting an email address? No, he didn't, he didn't use... I mean, now, when I say a few years, this might have been eight years ago. But I it was mean, not 20 years ago. If you want to send us an, a physical letter... I think down at the bottom of our website of openstudio.com is our address. Man, that would be awesome. Or like some gifts. Send us some stuff to like open on the show. <laughs> like Casey Neistat. You know, they have people always sending him oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, he's always sending. Yeah, yeah. send us No stuff. anthrax. No anthrax. Yeah, a melodica maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, great. So th- yeah, this came via email um, from April. Yeah, April, April Mink. That's such a great name. It is. Yeah. Are we okay using her full name? I think so. Man, you're, kinda, you're such a trusting guy, Adam. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right, good. Uh, so what does she say? She says, uh, I have heard you reference how important it is to really get your setup in your practice room so that you can pull up recordings, transcribe, watch open studio courses, smiley face, <laughs> yeah. et cetera. Maybe you could do a podcast episode on what you consider the essentials. I am getting ready to make an investment based on hearing Adam talk about how important it is and would love to get some advice. Right now, I'm just using my MacBook Pro and a Bose mini speaker. I plan on getting a monitor to view the video is in larger format, but would like to hear your opinion on speakers, what you use as backing tracks, iReal Pro, question mark, et cetera. Thank you for your professionalism in all you do best, April. Well, April, as a professional, I must say that my professional, <laughs> my opinion, professional opinion is <laughs> to... Uh, now, I, we do is, have diplomas on the wall here. Yeah, I don't know if like there's there's one way to, to do anything like this, but I can kind of tell you, you know, I'm sure we can talk about our setup. Um, I'm sure it's different for everybody. What, it's really whatever works for you. Yeah, why don't we just, before we get into the to our setup and maybe some possible setups, just kind of outline what sort of the goals would be for the setup because then maybe people could adapt in terms of that like what are we looking to be able to have as part of a setup i so i think it depends on on what you're trying to get out of it because so my setup is is i have a couple of different setups and they're they're often hybridized because i do different activities like i have my setup over here in our offices here are not only for my work with open studio but are for writing gigs Mm -hmm. you know so that it's the easiest place for me to compose Oh, uh, I know you have a setup like you have a specially custom desk for your composition stuff. Some people have that for like MIDI stuff or yep. recording um, and then also a practice setup. Now, my practice setup is at the moment uh, completely mobile. Like I keep a a small speaker. I think that's essential. A Bluetooth speaker, which are great now to have um, and a laptop if I want to check some stuff. Yep. Um, but that's f- and, and then I also have my journal and a pencil box with a bunch of different like highlighters and hipster nerdy, old school come on now nerdy stuff like, like it that. like it yeah yeah so i do think that essentials are some kind of way to play music physically in the space number one number listen one. listen <laughs> and and then some kind of way to to make notes yeah. whether that's a, a, a ipad or some other tablet or a phone or a laptop or right. a, a bullet journal, whatever it is, whatever you are into. Bujo. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know if that's a thing. Just made that <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. I think that the, the, the journal part um, or however you want to keep notes is really important from, from two different things. There's the kind of planning, mm-hmm. you know, what you're going to do. And we've talked about this in other episodes in terms of practice routine, you know, having a plan. And that normally, for me, having a written plan is nice. What's even better is kind of having a plan up here in your head, but you can do both, you yeah. know. Um, but certainly having that, so that would certainly be a goal for me for any kind of setup is to have a simple – well, let me just say this, just stepping back a little bit. I think if, if um, you know, you have – the the ability to make an investment into like kind of the perfect practice setup for you which it sounds like that's what april's looking for um it's a great opportunity it's kind of like you know if a great chef a great home chef has it has the chance to redesign or to, to build a kitchen it's like yeah they could go into any little you know 
a, a kitchen on a on a sailboat or something and whip up something great, of yeah, course. Yeah, but yeah. what if you had the chance to have everything where it's like maximum efficiency for your movement, the perfect oven and all that? Yeah, that's not going to make you a great chef, but it'll make it so much more delightful and easy for you to be able to operate in that environment. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what this is about is optimizing the things. And for me, it's like what you want to optimize for is focus. Yep. It's like to be able to really like the focal point is your instrument mm -hmm. always. Like so you don't want to have every bell and whistle around you maybe at that time for that kind of focused practice unless you can just be somebody that can survive like that mm -hmm. um you want it to sound really good mm -hmm. so that becomes a, a not less a thing of bringing in equipment but your physical surroundings um you know to your point as far as being able to listen i think super important and we've talked before about having you know a speaker set up and i mean thankfully yeah now even a 50 dollars bluetooth can do this where you can get the volume up enough where you can really do some great play alongs yeah you know where you can pump up that volume enough um and not have to just rely on headphones. Yeah. Having said that, I'm almost always like end up just like having some headphones or something because I don't Me have, too. you know, yeah, yeah. the perfect setup always, which is weird because we should have the perfect setup. Well, that's that's the thing. So let's break this down a little bit. So she she talks here about uh, get plan she plans on getting a monitor. Yeah. I highly recommend, especially if you're using sort of open studio videos. Yeah. I highly recommend getting a bigger monitor than just your laptop screen. Yes. Because it makes a huge difference in your workflow. You know, yeah. I um, on, on, our, on my desk over here, I have a lovely Steinway to my right. Mm -hmm. I have a MIDI keyboard to my left often. And then in the front, I have a big monitor that I connect my laptop to so I can use actually both screens. And I didn't realize how much that would be a game changer for my workflow. But yeah. that has definitely helped with anytime I have to do anything on video, anytime I have to do any composing, anytime I have to do any recording or mixing of audio, it is such a huge advantage to have all that that space um, on the computer. Yeah, you know, to to really do whatever you want, and then to have the keyboards at my disposal on either side, and then I have two. Uh, well, I, now they're being used here for our podcast, but usually I have two fairly nice Bluetooth speakers on either side, stereo speakers on either side, so I can also listen in space. Right, um, and that's my kind of my go-to stationary setup. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, and I'm just thinking about, yeah, like the monitor size thing with the Open Studio Lessons, that could really come into play too in terms of if there's something visually within the lesson and then there's also the notation mm -hmm. for those lessons that have that where you can really, wait, did you mention that already? Sorry if you no, did. Okay, where you can really optimize what you're seeing oh, at yeah. the same time. It, you know, because that's the whole thing. It's like I think any kind of workflow, work, work setup, and then the workflow that you can fit into that is about being able to take those like being able to focus and listen um you know where you're getting just the right amount of stuff without having to fuss with different things at the right time so that as you're getting those little breakthroughs they're very there apparent to you i mean none of these tools are going to make you better on their own yeah but the breakthroughs that you can have as you're getting information and then able to try it out if you're able to get those in an efficient way and like you met you know you mentioned about your computer it's like it could be any computer but there's nothing like having a super fast optimized totally. system where it never slows you down. You never have to wait as you're kind of either inputting or getting something out of That's it. That's the thing. You want as little filter as possible between what you're working on and, and getting it out. Yeah. So if it means, you know, if your computer is, is slow and, and crashing every 10 minutes, that's going to be a problem for your workflow. That's, That's right. really going to hinder you. And it's when you don't notice it. That's what you want. Right. You know, when you don't notice it all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and you know these these big monitors actually as an investment, they're not that expensive to buy. To buy, I, I don't I forget what size it is. Probably twenty something inch, inches long. Oh, yeah, we yep. use, yep. but they weren't outrageous. I right, mean, it was completely affordable. Yep. For, for and for what they've done for me, productivity wise, it's been great. Now I also have then I have a, a kind of messenger bag, a computer bag. Yep. that I kind of keep a mobile setup because you know I do have a piano that I practice across the street from the studio. I also will practice sometimes wherever I can find a piano. Yeah, me too. Know? So that I keep my laptop in. I keep a a um, speaker, a Bluetooth speaker, a smaller one that fits in there that I can hook up to my phone or my laptop and I can play along with records. Yep. And I keep a small piano, piano tuning kit in case. That's next level. Yeah. I haven't hit that yet, man. That's, uh, that's just in case I, I come slope. across. It's it's, it is slope. a slippery slope. You can <laughs> spend all your time tuning that that darn piano. So April's also asking, I'm just looking through here, the opinion on speakers. I know we talked about, the, you know, Bluetooth portable, which is nice, or having some good. Um, but what about the actual speakers? Because, like, one thing 
that we both have have done at times is you know there's there's monitor what are considered monitor speakers powered monitor speakers where you're going to get the most accurate kind of sound and most people are not used to listening like this but if you were creating a system and i'm thinking like here we have it more in terms of like at the workstations either if somebody's mixing or working on music but the idea is that you're sitting in front of speakers very closely mm -hmm. um not in the typical way you do in a living room with like kind of eight to 12 or 15 feet away but what are they called near near field monitors i think or something but the idea is that, and you look, you can get some really good speakers like this for, I think as low as like $300, $400 a pair, I want to say, like Mackie's, um, what is it, uh, Genelex, those mm -hmm. are a little more expensive. A little more expensive. But I mean, they're like, if you want to get great sound for close up and they're powered, you don't need an amplifier or whatever, you can come right out of a computer, you can come out of a bunch of different stuff. I mean, I'm looking around, we got wires everywhere. But, um, but that's a way you could, you could kind of get into some really good close up sound. And then for me, and I think Mackie's are good, like the, the value prop on Mackie's is really good. Um, for me, in terms of like home speakers, and like I'm thinking about, like I kind of have a listening environment in my living room that we've sort of adapted over the years, but it's just a great place to sit. I mean, like visually focus wise, and, and I don't have a piano in there. There's a piano in the next room and I can go down and play some, but when I just want to sit for what we call focus listening, I have some B&W yeah, um, yeah. B and W speakers. I have something. I mean, that's a very like luxury speaker brand out of the UK. I have something on the very budget end for them, which is still kind of on the pricey side. But I love the way those speakers sound. Now yeah. they're not for being up close. They're for like totally for living room situation. Yeah. Kind of for kind of you know depending on the tuning of the room and stuff. But I love the way those speakers sound, and like that's my. If money's no object, I would just get their their their. I know, man. I often have to make a choice between gear that I actually use yeah. on my professional life and a setup. For, yeah. Like I have a nice turntable and some vintage speakers that I bought at the record exchange here down the street, but uh, I would love to get like a super high end. Yeah. But it's like. I got, a, I, got a, I got vintage keyboards. You might have a little man cave in your future. I might have a Ho man cave. Hopefully the wifey's not listening right Kids now. Kids go away to college. <laughs> I might get that together. So uh, one last part of your question, April, where you talk about um, backing tracks. What yep. do you use backing tracks? You, you say iReal Pro. Actually, iReal Pro has gotten better. Um, I don't actually know what that did. They have. I mean, I know the the, yeah. the, fate, the real book. It's like a real book. So you can you can actually you can play uh, uh, backing tracks that sound pretty decent it comes from the app come from the app you can pick how many courses you want to do ahead of time set the tempo set the key is it automated though of any of yeah of any tune it's oh. pretty crazy man here i have it right here actually i'll bring it up so we can we can kind of uh, vamp on it but i will say that you know besides the iReal pro the iReal pro can be a little bit of a crutch i think um here here's the little 26.2 Ooh. You know, Ooh, ride pattern. This is what I'm saying. Negatory. It's not very <laughs> authentico. Right. <laughs> uh, but it'll get the job done in a pinch. Yeah. I, if I'm gonna play along with something, I usually play along with the recordings. Yeah. Of hello. what I of I want to what I want to do, even if that means I'm stepping on Miles Davis's toes. You're like the, the Dos Equis guys. I don't normally. Uh, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally. Uh, drink. I don't often drink beer. But, but when, when I, I do, do it's yeah. Dos Equis. <laughs> right. I don't normally play with tracks, but when I do, it's the real recording. <laughs> yeah, they, but I think you get more from playing with with PC and Philly Joe yeah. than you do getting, you know, space in this in this uh, play along. And we've started with Open Studio. Shameless plug here is that um, you know a adding backing tracks by you know today's PC and Philly Ruben Rogers and Greg Hutchinson and different rhythm sections that we've had. And we've been experimenting with that and have them available for several courses and there's going to be more because I think that's a that's a fun way to play along with we have Montez Coleman as yeah. well Nathan Pence um, Nathan Pence we have some really great players so there's some stuff there that you can play along with um, we can do some trading stuff didn't we on yeah. elements of jazz piano yeah on one of your courses we yeah. have a, a whole thing where you trade fours with you Right. Where our students could trade for it. Who's trading with who? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was a confusing sentence yeah, I just yeah. spoke. But, but yeah. I think, yeah, backing tracks. Um, I mean, there was the Jamie Abersall ones. I'm sure those are still available. They are. And this is this. I mean, I know those players were better than these yeah. uh, software instruments, but it's kind of the same kind of deal where yeah, it's like yeah. it's not a it's real a environment. Right. Yeah. Right, right. There's some good. There's a, you know, you can check out some stuff on YouTube, too. There's actually some decent stuff on YouTube. But, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, 
go with the recordings you love and, yeah. and just play along. That's, yeah. that's the real deal to me. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, great. Thank you so much, April, for the question and for the idea. It's a super interesting and good luck with your setup and let us know how it goes and give us some, some tips. Anybody wants to hit us up on, on Twitter, Hey Open Studio, at Hey Open Studio, and let us know what your ideal practice is. Yeah, you know what is. maybe we could do on Twitter? If you want to just uh, send us a picture of your, of your setup. I like that. We'd love to see it. I'll, I'll uh, maybe tweet out mine. I never tweet anything. So. Right. I can give you the link to the app in case you need that <laughs> and a little instructional video on how to use it. That's right. Yeah, good stuff. Cool. All right, well, till tomorrow. You'll hear it.